Hi, I'm Tim. I'm from Launch Darkly, and I'm here to talk to you about feature flags. I don't really have that much time. It's a 15-minute talk, so I'm going to go real fast. Anyone who's been in an ops rotation or on call knows that change is dangerous, or can be dangerous. So most of the time, change is fine. You're pushing out new software to your users, and uh, it's great. And other times, you get this. You have pages going off in the middle of the night, woken up, joining war, war, war room calls. In fact, one of the reasons you're at this very conference is because Atlassian makes some of the best change management tools there are. Jira, Confluence, HipChat or Stride, depending on what you're using. They're here to, th those tools exist so that you can make changes that you can believe in. So that even if things do fail, you can communicate to your teams what's going on and understand the changes that you have. So that you can have a little bit more of this you know, going to sleep every night, it's, it's nice, and a little less of these kind of terrible, terrible things. In software development, changes about re release and deploy. Um, they're kind of the same thing, sort of, not really. They're not really similar at all, but it's easy to think of them as linked together because when you release code, you have to get it somewhere. Uh, you, you could release, and that's nice, you've released. but no one's using it until you deploy. And deploy could mean lots of things. However, um, there are two different teams at play here. Release is kind of an engineering, uh, engineering term, like R&D. And they're incentivized to deliver value. Every change is something that you wanted to happen, like shipping a new feature or fixing a bug. On the flip side, deploying is usually the realm of the operations team or IT or you know, someone who does that in, in the team. Maybe it's the same person, right? Especially if you're subscribed to more of a DevOps um, style. The point here, uh, the, they're, incentive, uh, they're incentivized by reducing risk. They're here to protect the company or the business or whatever you're doing from the change you're making. However, this is not ideal. There's friction here. Like one, one side just wants to make changes and the other side wants to protect themselves from the change. Really, we want to get to a place where you can deploy when it's convenient for you to deploy, not in the middle of the night, not on the weekend. And you want to release when things are ready. That brings me to what's a feature flag. Can I get a poll from the room? Who here already knows what feature flags are? Oh, most of you. This is great. I love it. For those of you who don't know, it's this. It's a decision point in code. And m most importantly, that can vary from external input, so not within the code. It's really just a fancy if statement. It's a fancy if statement. Normal software development, you have a behavior. Do something. If you want to change that behavior, the easiest way to do that is this. You simply replace it with something else. Um, and that kind of leads you to the old style. In, in a feature flag world, what it looks like is this. At the top, you have feature flag. You have both behaviors side by side. You can in, if you can change the value of this new feature enabled thing at the top, you can get the old behavior or the new behavior. Now, I realize I'm hand waving this like new feature enabled thing. I don't really have that much time. 15 minutes is not a lot, and I could go through the, the various iterations of this, but just know that we, we kind of do this. Um, you don't necessarily need Launch Darkly to uh, make things go, but it certainly helps. To kind of belabor the point, suppose that you have a developer make some code. This code is uh, encapsulated in a release. There's multiple changes that happen in a release. Usually, maybe, maybe you're doing one at a time. That's, that's great, but most of the time, you're doing uh, a, a group of them. This goes to the next phase where someone is responsible for pushing or deploying or shipping or something, making the code go somewhere else. And usually that's like server or CD or distribution. I don't know. But suppose that you do that, and uh, the server blows up, and it's bad. This is where you get the, this is where you get the, the war room. Now, uh, here's a question. What went wrong? Is it a bug? Or, dis or did this person screw up? Did they mess up like a, a deploy command, forget to, de to deploy a file or make a config change? You don't know, actually. Meanwhile, 
the customers are like, hey, what happened to the server? And this person is desperate to get things going again. So let's talk about a world with feature flags, what it might look like. Same thing, you have some code, you need to move to the server. In this case, we ship off. If the server now blows up, you kind of have a clue about what happened. It's probably something in the deploy step. This is an operational risk. You can, you, you can now focus on what did I do wrong? I pushed code, it's the same, but it's, it, you know, it blew up. Uh, on the flip side, you can turn each feature on one by one. And if, that it, if it then blows up, then you know which one probably caused the problem. This is already an advantage, right? This is the simplest possible thing, but it, this is already an advantage uh, from the old style. This is, helps you manage functional risk. Um, and another thing is you could turn it right off again. Right? That thing that made the thing blow up, you can turn it off. We call this kill switching. You can kill switch a feature such that it doesn't run anymore. You get the old behavior. It's this, hopefully the old behavior was good because, um, you know. But moving on, the punchline here is you can separate these risks. And this is just the first, like, simplest use of a, a feature flag. Um, so I've prepared the slide. Please take a picture and tweet it. I, I, I would appreciate it. Moving on. Um, you don't have to ship the feature to everybody. You can simply say, OK, please ship to a small portion. You do not have to. It's, it's not just an on and off switch. It doesn't have to be. And if something should go wrong, only these people are affected. We could call this canary launching. You can ship to a very small segment and then roll it out slowly until you're an, as you, as you uh, are ready. In this way, deploying and releasing are not the same step. There are a lot of advantages from separating them uh, logically. And you can separate the experience of whatever your um, code changes. It doesn't have to be everyone at the same time. The real power here is feature flags allow you to decouple these dependencies. To show you another way feature <coughs> flags do that, if you've been at any summit presentation, you've seen one of these before. Suppose you need to make a big change. Well, you just make a feature branch and push in code, and here you go. ABC 344 refactor user search. You're a big company, or maybe have more development resources. Maybe you work two sides of this in parallel. You have a back end team working refactor user search, and you have a front end team working create V2 stuff. What happens now if 344 cannot ship? because maybe they get called away in one of those fire calls. Now 345 is stuck. They cannot merge because they depend on 344. In a feature flag world, this isn't necessarily the reality. 345 can be merged to master, even though it depends on 344 if it's flagged off. It, you still have the old behavior, but you're not paying the cost of code rot. This is something I hear all the time. We're looking to move from legacy monolith to microservice. What does this mean? A lot of people are here. You have something, and it talks to some data store. If you read the internet, this is, this is not good, um, supposedly, because really it ought to be something like this. You have lots of moving parts. You have uh, cattle, not pets, right? Uh, that's, this, is really, this, this is really nice if you're in a greenfield situation. When you can build from scratch, and you can throw away the old system, and uh, you know, build from build from new. But most of us are not here. We're here, Brownfield, where you have a, you have to keep the lights on. You have you have a business to run while moving your moving your uh, technology stack to the new thing. Uh, and the journey is what's important. If you're here, um, what can you do to keep the lights on? One thing that Alas uh, I'm sorry, one thing that LaunchDarkly did was to start using feature flags in more than kill switches and canary launches. One thing that we did was we were able to uh, use feature flags to verify the scale and uh, veracity of changes to infrastructure. Uh, in, in, one, in, in one regard, what we were able to do was shove um, to split off behavior in data stores such that you're pushing a portion of production load into a new storage system. 
as you um, a, as you do that, you get you you can programmatically test that the inputs on both sides are correct, and then double write. Use feature flags to simply shove as uh, the same production load into your new proposed system without exposing the behavior to your users. And when you're ready and confident to move forward, you can um, use feature flags to seamlessly deliver the new experience to, to your customers. We write this up in, a, in our blog. Um, there's a little bit too much detail for me to go into this uh, in, in this 15 minute talk. I could probably spend 45, an hour, talking about this just one aspect, but go ahead, please uh, read it at your leisure. Another aspect is, okay, great. You're, you're here, congrats. Like, you've gone to the, microserv uh, the microservice. How do you um, actually release anything? In, the in a monolith world, simply do what you did before. You, you make a change and you ship it, great. In a microservices world, this is actually way more complicated. A feature could go across multiple systems. So a change could be having to do this. And that's much harder. You end up with lots and lots of dependencies. This is an area where we kind of excel. I'll, I'll actually, Atlassian partners with us to deliver um, their cloud platform on powered by us, such that they can deliver features to, to their entire microservices fleet very quickly. Behind every software release are teams, the people behind them, and feature flagging is just a tool. It's one thing to say, hey, feature flags, like that's great, I want to adopt it, but ultimately, the pe you still have to educate your teams on how to do it, and this is an area where LaunchDarkly has put in a lot of thought and a lot of technology. LaunchDarkly has um, really thought about what it takes to move, pe move uh, engineering teams into this new I, this new phase of uh, development, from writing uh, having best practices documentation on how best to implement, to having a feature set that supports the enterprise, um, being able to have access control, audit logs, to integrating the tools uh, with tools that you use every day like Jira. Here we have an integration where within the Jira ticket that might have caused change you can view and uh, look at in which environments um, you have those changes in and the state of their flags. That way you can get full traceability end to end on the, um, on, on the state of a feature. Uh, this is still in beta, so you'll have to, oh, what happened to my slide? Um, this is still in beta, so you'll have to contact us on, on getting that integration, but uh, look forward to having a, a conversation with you. So my talk is about shipping faster, reducing risk, and building scale. And no surprise, it's in the title, it's, it's about feature flags. Feature flags allow you to decouple dependencies between lots of different things, not just code. It means that fast, fa going faster doesn't mean accepting more risk. Releasing isn't the same thing as deploying. Experience doesn't necessarily need to be everyone. And scaling doesn't mean moving slower, not necessarily. Tim Wong, thanks for coming to my talk. Please come to our booth. We have lots and lots of swag to give out. And don't want to